Are we still good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're good. We're, we're live. You never know. I get all these signals from the people that are doing the camera back. They're like, ah, stop, whatever. Okay, we, over the last couple of days, we were working with the SIT command as a partial deactivation for whenever we have aggressive encounters with our dogs while we're walking. Today, we're going to talk about using the down command. The down command as an option rather than the sit. Now, anytime we start thinking about using the down command, we need to go over real quickly pros and cons. What's the pro of utilizing the down whenever you're going to encounter something that your dog may decide to invoke the hawk strategy on, whether it be an unfamiliar dog or an unfamiliar person? Which is the, what are the pros? Well, here's the first pro. For a, a, it's a full deactivation. When your dog lies down, it is fully deactivated, both from a physiological standpoint, but also from a psychological standpoint. For your animal to lie down like that under those conditions, wow, your dog is fully deactivated. And from, a, and from the visual perspective of the oncoming person and their dog, what does that look like? Wow, I'm walking my dog and I see you coming and I'm really worried about you and then all of a sudden I see you stop and your dog lies down. Now, nah, at least me as a human, I'm thinking, golly, that person has great control over that dog. That's awesome. So I'm not going to be so worried. And then, of course, because I'm not worried, then my attitude is going to go down the leash into my dog and my dog's not going to be so worried as a matter of, of a consequence of that. But also from the dog's perspective, dogs learn with their eyes first. So when they see this other animal lie down, then to them, this is an animal that's not ready to invoke the hawk strategy. So those are the pros behind it. Here's the cons. Training it. Getting your dog to do it. It can be extremely difficult at first. And the reason being is that if your dog was able to talk, when it's encountering someone coming with their dog and it thinks possibly this could be an aggressive encounter, it, your dog would probably say, hey, you know what? This isn't a very clever time for me to be lying down on the job. I think I need to be on my feet. After all, if I need to get the heck out of here and invoke the dove strategy and flee or even display or the hawk strategy, all of those are going to require me to be on my feet. So what the heck are you doing asking me to lie down now? This is not a very clever time to be doing that. So it can be very difficult to convince your dog to lie down when every instinct it has, every fibrous body is saying to do the direct opposite. So you have to train it. And when you train it, again, train it outside of those conditions. That's the final product. You got to start with the beginning product. And that means you train outside of those conditions. Train it like an instinct, like we told you yesterday with the sit. Like an instinct. You say dog does, that's it. I don't care. No matter what, daylight, nighttime, people coming over, I don't care. You say down, your dog lies down. And then number two. Start with less aggressive dogs. So when you start to implement this out on your walks, don't pick the biggest bully on the block. Try with dogs that are less reactive, especially if you know them. Don't go by the house in which the dogs are lunging at you and you know that. Try to avoid that home. Try with lesser aggressive encounters first. Okay, then don't use free. Here, my cow dog, leash up. So I want to show you something here. Remember when we were training the down, this is not a time in which you're out walking your dog and all of a sudden, oh no, here comes that big bad dog. Stop and now try to use the pulley method. Don't do that. I'm telling you, first of all, you need to keep your eyes on that big bad dog that's coming. Number two, should your dog at this moment lunge? Again, you could do the down. Down the ground, you go. So don't try it. If you have not trained your dog well enough that they'll lay down verbally just from an auditory signal, you're not ready to employ the down out in conditions such as what I just said with the big dog coming, big bad dog. And then lastly, when you start to implement this and it is successful for you, make it a point to do this around all dogs, at least for a while. And how long is a while? Really, probably about at least 50 encounters. Otherwise, your dog will learn, hey, he's telling me to down, so that dog must be the dog I need to keep an eye on. That's the aggressive dog. 
when we select only certain dogs, well then there you have it. The dog will start to immediately, immediately become either fearful or reactive just from the down command alone. It wouldn't matter if a mouse walked by. Your dog is already in preparation, ready to spring up, ready to lunge, ready to get the heck out of Dodge. That's what happens. They learn by the presentation of patterns. So be very careful about only selecting the down on aggressive dogs or people that your dog seems to respond aggressively to. Okay, those are just some basic rules when it comes to evoking the down. Now, I'm going to demonstrate with Captain, and I've got Joshua way back there in the shade back there, and he's going to be bringing a puppy by that's currently enrolled in one of our basic obedience uh, born train programs, and the young pup's name is Pepper. So Pepper volunteered to help us out today. So just kind of keep an eye on me and Captain, and let me kind of show you what we do here whenever we encounter dogs and we decide to use the down. Heel. Okay, so Captain and I see this dog coming. Sit. Down. Get the down where it can happen with no any sort of pulley method, no footstep method. Try to get the, the dog will lie down. Just at the worst, a hand signal. And that's it. You don't want to be taking yourself at a disadvantage, off balance, you want to make sure you are always under control. Okay, and then once the encounter has left, remember that's when we reward. So we're going to show this again a little bit faster this time. Heel. So we're healing. Sit. Down. Good. Now stand here, ready to go. Allow them to pass. Good morning. Nice dog you have there, sir. Thank you. And you are ready to go. Now this is a dog who's learned to be very calm and to completely deactivate under these conditions. Go and remain over there, Joshua. I'll come your way this time. Okay, now I'm going to show you another strategy. Heel. So we walk our dog. But this time, here he comes. Switch. We switch our dog over. Down. And now, good morning, sir. Hi, nice, nice dog. dog you have. The difference here is the dog is now on my right side, away from the other person and their dog. Remember a few videos ago I talked about obstacles? Obstacles, wolves want clear, a clear vantage point. They want to be able to see the danger coming. They want to be able to see the intruders on their land. If you place an obstacle between the dog and the intruder, or the provocative animal, you're going to have less likelihood that the animal is now going to jump up and think that it needs to intervene. It needs to respond to that encounter. So therefore, I love the switch and I love the animal in the down while I am on this side, the side that the people and the other dogs approaching. Heel. We'll demonstrate again. Switch. Atta boy. Good job, cattle dog. Switch. Good job. Down. Good. Nice dog you have. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Okay, he is gone. Coast is clear. I can reward my dog. Heel. And we leave again. Switch. Okay, now, if you're out practicing this, and you see Joshua coming from a long ways away, and that means well over about 50, 60 feet away. Only at that time, sit. If you have to, down, use your footstep method, use your pulley method, but get your foot off of that leash before they, be, they reach a, a distance of probably about 15 to 20 feet. All right, so free. Okay, Joshua, start heading towards me. Okay, so Joshua's closing the gap. Down. I have time. Now, I can be prepared. How do? Doing well, yourself? I'm doing well. Good job, cattle dog. Heel. Good boy. Okay, those are just some pointers when utilizing the down. More than anything, 
if you say down one time and the dog does not lie down, it is focused on that other dog, focused on that other human being, skip the down at that moment. Just go for that powerful sit and make it happen. Make it happen. A partial deactivation is better than no deactivation. So again, down is reserved for those dogs that are highly trained, those owners who have put in the work to get that thing done, they will reap what they sow. But this can take a long time to achieve. It's not an overnight success, and I'm gonna be dead honest with you, there are some dogs you'll never achieve this with. Never, and I'm gonna be, I'm building that. I got plenty of time. Like I said, we got plenty of time. We got a lot more videos headed your way. And I'll be talking about those dogs that you will just really, I guess you should never say the word never, but you're gonna have a very difficult time getting them to lay down. All right, so that's downing. Joshua, come on in here a little closer. All right, I want them to, I just love how cute this puppy is. <laughs> Catahoula pup, beautiful, beautiful puppy here. Just gonna show them off a little bit. Good job, Pepper, appreciate you doing such a good job, buddy. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. It's a beautiful day here. As you can see, we love to be outdoors. Uh, if you found this valuable, share it. You have questions, you know where to reach me. Send you those questions to me, and we'll get them answered. And I look forward to chatting with you again tomorrow. Have a great day.